Cops are supposed to be here to protect us. But what happens when criminals pretend to be the cops to abuse their power? In this video, we'll cover three examples of this. Starting with Jackson Jones, who was pulled over after cops received reports of a strange police officer aggressively questioning random people around town. Do you have any weapons in the car or anything like that? Like a gun or anything? I'm not sure. I don't even have a gun. Okay. I'm 19 years old. If this is going to cause problems in the truck over there, I, I'm just going to take out the vest. And I'm from Tennessee. So, okay. if, why are you wearing the vest? Well, like I said, I drove from all the way from Tennessee. Jones says he's from Tennessee, over 500 kilometers away from where he was pulled over in Oklahoma. So it's strange that he's still got on all his police gear, especially given he's off duty, and the cops think so too. Why do you wear a vest outside of the facility? Is this an I mean, agency vehicle, or is this your personal vehicle? This is my Kia. It's just a little odd, because whenever I worked in the jail, I took my crap off, especially if I was taking a long drive I mean, from Tennessee. Nice. You That's got any kind of employment identification? I do, they don't give me that when you work at the jail. Really? You don't have like an access card or an ID badge or anything for the facility that you work at? I don't. When Jones fails to produce any form of certification that proves he works in law enforcement, the cops start to get extremely suspicious. Not only was he wearing a police uniform, but he was also pulling civilians over and aggressively questioning them. The cops know something is up with this guy, they just need to figure out what he's doing and, more importantly, why? And you don't have a gun with you or anything like that? I don't. You can search the car. I don't. You don't mind if I search the car? I don't think so. Okay, cool. Step on out if you don't mind. <laughs> Face the vehicle. I'll just check you for make sure you don't have any guns or nothing. As Jones steps out of the car, we can see that he is in full police uniform, complete with handcuffs. Even if Jones was a jail worker in Tennessee, as he claims, he doesn't have jurisdiction to arrest people in public. All the signs point to something being seriously wrong here. So, given he's been granted permission by Jones, the officer decides to conduct a full search of the vehicle. We'll just check everything out. If everything's good, then we'll, we'll go on. One empty bottle, one partially missing bottle, and then two more to go, and he, it was a pack of six. Just all kinds of red flags, man. I would not drive from Tennessee with a vest carry on. No. Or even a duty belt on. As soon as I get off, I take that shit off. Yeah. Just, I'm tired of being in it. I hate get driving out. from Top Golf to my house with this shit on. <laughs> The officer took Jones to his patrol vehicle while he finished off the search, and Jones would take this opportunity to further prove how delusional he really is. Why don't we go have a seat in my Tahoe? Huh? I'll have a seat in my Tahoe. Back seat? No, back seat. Asking whether he can sit in the front seat seems to prove that he fully believes these cops are nothing but his friends and co-workers, backed up by the fact that he's wearing a thin blue line hoodie, a sort of cop pride symbol that shows how connected Jones feels to his position in law enforcement. But then the officers ask to talk to his supervisor, something that would easily confirm whether or not Jones is who he says he is. But it doesn't go quite as expected. Where'd you get the vest carrier from? Did you order it online? No. From a friend? Or? I didn't get it. Bought it at a store? Uh, it's a police store from there in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. You can only be a law enforcement to get it. I, I bought it like four months ago. You can take all this stuff from me and keep me out of jail. Okay. I mean, that's, I don't care. I mean, I bought all this stuff. None of that stuff was given to the county. Give me your phone back. Like I said, I'm not going to see uh, DPS. All right. Line. Cool. Uh, 423-494. Yes, this is Deputy Mike Hansen with the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office. I'm out on a individual saying he works for uh, Campbell County Sheriff's Office uh, by the name of Jackson Jones. You'll give me a call back, 405-869. So it went to a voicemail. So that's like not an official work number. The number that Jones gave was fake or at least not belonging to an official police department. Jones was either hoping that they'd give him the benefit of the doubt when it hit voicemail, or that he could convince someone to call them back and pretend to be his supervisor. Either way, it didn't work. And the final nail in the coffin was when the witness he pulled over turned up to the scene and completely exposed his story. He was dressed like a cop. They had sheriff written on the side right here. 
he was sitting in a driveway, and uh, I was there about 10 minutes of staring at him, and I'm like, what the heck is this guy? It's kind of odd, he's in, in, in our neighbor's driveway. He gets out, and I said, can I help you, sir? He's like, well, uh, I was wondering, what, what was your problem? You were staring at me over in the, in the driveway, and I said, yeah, I was kind of curious who you were, because I lived down the road, I was kind of seeing what was going on. He goes, I'm a, I'm a uh, undercover cop. For Wellston. Well, I got a call. I got to let you go. And then he left. And then when he left, he came towards uh, the Turnpike Bridge. And he took the Huey and was trying to pull another car. He was trying to flash his lights at him. Really? And I, I didn't know if, if they pulled over or not, but he was flashing his lights like he was trying to pull them over. Not only did the witness attest that Jones seemed to be unlawfully pulling over anybody that came into view, but he also told the officer that Jones claimed to be an officer out of Wellston, a town in Oklahoma. A far cry from Knoxville, where he told the cops he worked. As far as the officers were concerned, that was reason enough to bring him in, and they immediately went back to the control vehicle to arrest him. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do. Alright, turn around face the other way. Put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for impersonating law enforcement, alright? And then you also have a charge for transporting an open container. The penalty for impersonating a police officer is between one and three years jail time, and he'll likely be facing a small fine from the open container charge as well. But most importantly, Jones is now off the street. The only reason someone like him would ever impersonate a police officer is simply because they enjoy the position of power and authority it gives them. If someone is willing to lie in such a brazen way to obtain that power, who knows what they're willing to do with that power. Hour. And that was exactly the problem police found with Daniel Nelson. Police found him next to a fully outfitted vehicle that heavily resembled a cop car, complete with lights and emblems claiming that it was in fact a local police vehicle. Nelson claims that he patrols as a police officer for a church helping out homeless people by checking on them and ensuring they're not in danger. But the cops felt as though something was off. But then I walked, uh, this guy's, um, this guy's on, he gave me his card, but see so if you can try and grab a VIN on it for me while I'm talking to him. He works for a church, there's no plate on it. I just noticed, I mean, I noticed before after you talked to me that there was no plate on it, but he's got a dog in there, just be aware. If y'all hear something happen, Oh, I'm That's here on a separate entity. I'm not a part of that. Oh, uh, but something happened because you say you, it's a dude. Uh, yeah, I'm here for something else, probably. Yeah, so but I'm just they're, saying. They're, they're their own. Life. Nelson says that he was called out to look for a homeless person that was possibly in crisis. But after talking to the guy, he decides that everything's fine and heads out. But before he goes, the cop asks for his date of birth, claiming they just want his information to take down for their list of local officers, not from the official police department. In reality, though, the cops used his name and date of birth to run his information and find his address so they could investigate further the next day. hear him in there talking to his dogs. Despite the fact that nobody answered the door, the fake police car was outside the house, the dogs were home, and they could hear him inside talking to the dogs. Above all that, it was 6 in the morning. The cops were almost 100% certain Nelson was inside, but refused to answer to the cops. However, the police definitely didn't expect what happened next. Later that day, Nelson turned himself in at the police station. You decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present. You have the right to stop the questioning and remain silent at any time you wish, and the right to ask for and have a lawyer at any time you wish, including during the questioning. Do you understand each of these rights? Yeah. Say yes. Yes. What followed was a 20-minute interrogation where Nelson seemed completely delusional. At no point did he ever seem to accept that what he was doing was against the law. And whenever he was met with an issue, he responded by saying he was a man of God and working in his name. Never once in 10 years have I associated myself with being a police officer. It's never changed. Never. I'm just telling you, our witness says you did it at least twice. Twice? You identified how you, yourself as a police even, officer twice before? while you were talking to him. He said you identified yourself, and that's the only reason he stopped to speak with you. So at this point, he said he felt it was odd that you would stop him while walking. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Right, but why would you stop to talk to somebody at 3 in the because morning? Because he matched the description of somebody I was in backpack, same very thing I told you. Yeah, you told me it was a white subject that was your... Yeah, with a swimming on. 
have never once in my entire career of doing this for a decade devoted to God have ever made that statement. Okay. This is the story Nelson maintained throughout the entire interrogation, that he's worked for God and the church, and he's just there to help people. But obviously, with the witness statement and patrol vehicle rigged with sirens and lights, the police weren't believing a word. But that raises a different question. If Nelson wasn't out there trying to protect these people at 3 a.m., what was he doing talking to them? It's probably for the best that he'll be spending at least a year behind bars in the Wisconsin State Prison. These last two suspects have been so caught up in their fantasies that they impersonated officers with absolutely no prior experience as one. But the case is different for Jaredson Mackey, a man that had been fired from the force but took matters into his own hands. Hey, partner. Hi. Hey, I'm Officer Park with the Accord Police Department. How are you all? Uh, the only reason why I'm pulling you over, I guess y'all were, well, that's my chief of police right there. He saw y'all go around traffic. He was trying to figure out who, who y'all are with or what was going on. The cops had seen Mackie flash his lights and go around traffic, something that real cops aren't allowed to do, let alone those in suspicious looking vehicles that aren't even registered with the police force. Yeah, I work, I'm off 20 hero operator. Oh, off duty yeah. hero operator? How you doing, Chief? Hey. I was, I'm off duty operator. I just was working off regularly. That's my ID. Uh -huh. That's my Why is the car registered to an individual? That's mine. This is my car. So what are you doing with all these red lights? Sorry? Why all these emergency lights? Yes. And did I see you using emergency lights to pull out into traffic on Lake Eckworth Drive? Oh, no, because I couldn't, I couldn't get to you, Chief. You notice? That's a standstill. So I flashed the lights looking to see me, and I was trying to get in the line. Who do you work for? This is my company. I'm an off-duty hero operator. This is my company. So you look like me, you're impersonating a police officer. Oh, uh, no, sir. I'm not impersonating, sir. Mackey claims that he's an off-duty hero, or highway emergency response operator, whose job is to clear the roads and ensure normal traffic flow is restored around accidents. However, his vehicle should be registered to the Georgia Department of Transportation instead of himself, so red flags are immediately raised to the police chief, especially when he hears that he was weaving through traffic while off-duty. ID on you? Yes, sir. We look in the front. We look in the yeah. front. Yeah. I see red lights. I saw red lights when you pulled out. Yeah, that's right. That's when it activated to the back. Yeah. Where's your ID? Right here, chief. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a lighting permit for the vehicle? Yeah, right down the glass. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Be right back with you, okay? There's your ID back. Thank you. Look, um, Given with all the light and permit and stuff that I'm seeing, I'm just going to assume everything's properly permitted and stuff for the vehicle. It is, sir. Uh, that said, with what my chief's observation, you know, the use of those are for strictly business purposes. You no, can't right. you can't be using it to pull in the traffic, okay? Yes, sir. So I am going to issue a citation for unlawful operation for emergency vehicle, okay? I want to verify your employment, and I'm probably going to have CID look into it, to be honest with you, to see what you're doing. I, I, don't, I, know, chief, I don't feel good. Chief, of course, chief I, can show you, I can show you my LLC. I can show my LLC right now. I'll let, I'll let them handle it. Mackey was given a citation for unlawful operation of an emergency vehicle and let go for the time being. But when the officers returned back to the station and contacted the GDOT, they discovered that Mackey was a hero operator, but had been terminated from them in January six months earlier. He had kept his badge and permits and knew exactly what to say to the officers for them to believe that he was well within his rights to operate his vehicle. But luckily, these cops were too smart to get caught out, and Mackey was arrested for impersonating a police officer two days later. If you enjoy true crime videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to see more.